So come to standing, lift and roll the shoulders. We're going to be quite classic today. Come to have feet. Um, just find your balance, and you can find that by slightly going forwards and backwards, maybe side to side. Just um, gaze the tip of your fingers. Don't hold any tension in the body. So strangely for hips, if your balance is right and you've got everything stacked up, there is less pressure on the hip because everything's aligned properly. And then softening the knees, circling up, really stretching up, palms together, come back down through the center, soften the knees, stretching up, join the thumbs, just slightly side to side, down to the center, just circle the hands down, and again soften the knees. Stretching up, down, and soften the knees again. Stretching up, join the thumbs and almost stretch backwards, really lifting the uh, waist away from the pubic bone. Bring the head upright and soften the knees. And then soften the knees again, plus the reverse. Your lateral stretch to the one side, coming to the centre, stretching up and then over to the other side. You can look forward or up, come to the centre, turn to one side, come to the centre and turn to the other side. Come to the centre. Release the arms and just stretch them out. And look beyond the fingers of one hand. Come back with the head to the centre and then turn to look beyond the fingers of the other hand. Come to the centre and then just drop the arms. Lift and roll the shoulders. Lift and roll one shoulder back and then lift and roll the other shoulder back. And then breathe and turn the head to the left. And in. When you're ready on an in-breath, come back to the centre and then on an out-breath, turn to look over the right shoulder. In and out. And then come to the centre. Soften the knees. Stretch up. Palms together. Come through the centre. Soften the knees to the shins. Half lift. Breathing out, softening. Breathing in, half lift again. Stay here as you breathe out. Breathing in, soften the knees, press your feet down and roll up vertebra by vertebra to standing. Raising the arms up. Take hold of the right wrist with the left hand. Just go over and away from the right waist. Come to the centre, take hold of the left wrist with the right hand. And then looking forward or up, depending on your deck. Come to the centre, stretch the arms up, and just circle the wrists down. And then just shake the fingers out. And just pull your fingers and pull them again. And then, this might not be your favourite, but however you want, whether you want to do a full jump, or whether you just want to lift your heels, it's good. It's, think of the vibrational aspect, uh, and just stretching up to the side, and uh, down, and then just come to stand still, come with your feet apart, hands out, up, Come to stretch them out, and then we're going to do a twist from side to side. Feel you can adjust your feet as you start quite exaggerated. And then just speed up, and we'll 
stay doing this for a little while. Just blowing away the mental and emotional cobwebs. and then start to slow down. And you can stand still. Lift to roll your shoulders and bring your feet back. And come to the top of the mat. And again, breathe in. Stretching up and almost back. And as you breathe out through your mouth, just open your arms, soften your knees, and come to hold your opposite elbows just for a moment while you're down. Then straighten the legs and feel that your hips are high and feel that you're just extending really from your chest slightly so you're not just stretching your back. Taking it in and an out breath. And then drop the hands to the floor to either side of your feet and step back with your right foot stretching the right foot and then right knee down to the ground. Your back right toes can be tucked or flat. And then just come up on your fingertips and really feel that you're stretching into the hip, looking either forward or up. And then sliding back the left foot. So I'm staying here with a cat cow and we all do a cat Dipping the back, looking up, and rounding. I would do that again, or if you want to carry on to a downward dog, soften the knees and come to your downward dog, lengthening the back and then stretching the legs out. To engage the core, look to your thumbs and then look back to towards your navel, the big toes, taking it in and an out breath. And then drop the knees to the ground, meeting up everyone on the knees. And once more, cat cow, dipping the back, looking up, with your neck all about that. Breathing out, rounding, chin to chest. And, and then come to neutral and step. Bring your hands to the left and step up with your right foot. Hands to either side of your right foot. Your toes, back toes can be tucked under or flat. And just lean over your front leg. Your foot can be stretched forward or you can have your toes up to the ceiling again or you can alternate. Just stretching out the back of the right leg. And then bring your hands back to the centre. Slide the right foot back. Just sway the bottom from side to side. And if your head wants to join in, it doesn't matter which way you move your neck. And then move your hands to the right to allow your left foot to come up. And extend your left um, leg. You can either have your toes up or pointing forward to look at your big toe and just coming over your left extended leg. Feel the stretch at the back of the thigh. And then hands to the centre more to support you to slide the left leg back. And knees slightly apart, big toes together as we come to an extended child's pose. Your elbows can be on the ground or off the ground. And feel that you're breathing into the kidneys. If you can, have a sense and as you breathe in throughout this practice, engaging the perineum, which is sometimes opposite to other uh, traditions, but breathing in, just engaging the perineum and then just breathing out, just releasing it. Then 
and then sliding the hands back. Hands go to the left, your right foot comes up again. Feel that you can bring your right foot to the right to support you, and again, your back left toes can be tucked on flat. Tucked um, gives you more stability in your spine, but it might not suit your feet, so whatever works for you. And if that's possible, to kneel up. Open the hands to open the shoulders in the sockets, and looking slightly forward or up, lifting your chin if that works for you. Controlled lift. Bring the head upright, and then bring your left hand to the outside of the right thigh, and your right hand on your um, waist. As you breathe in, lengthen the body, and breathe out, turning a little bit to look over the right, to the right. It might be over the right shoulder, it might not be. Your head is always the last thing to turn. Just enjoy. Turn, come back, drop your hands, and we'll do a crescent um, move by raising the hands, perhaps joining the thumbs, and looking forward or then up if that's good for your neck, and just slightly leaning back, lifting up and away from the waist, away from the pubic bone, and then lowering the hands back down to alongside your right foot and sliding your right foot back. Again, tipping the back, looking up, breathing out around the back. Breathing in, tipping the back, looking up, and rounding the back. And then just bring your bottom towards your heels, and Stretch your arms out. If you're squashing your tummy, then take your knees a little bit wider. And just walk your hands to the right, so the left hand goes on top of the right arm, stretching out now the right side. I think there's a muscle called the quadratus lumborum, which runs along the, from the hip up to the ribs. And that can, be, I think this is getting stretched in this um, pose, which is very, again, helpful for the lower back issues. And then walk your hands to the centre and take your hands to the left, so that your right palm is on top of your left palm, and now that stretches along the right side, and it stretches under the arm. And then bring your hands back to the centre, come up to me, and then move your hands to the right, so that you can Bring your left foot up. Feel that you can move your left foot to the left foot in the balance. And then kneeling up, open your palms, opening the, into the shoulders, looking forward or up. And then bring your head upright and take the right hand to the outside of the left thigh, left hand on the left waist, lengthen as you breathe in and breathe. Breathing in, lengthen, and breathing out, turn. Just enjoy. Turn. And then release, coming back to the centre. Circling the hands up, stretching up. But almost back. If you help to hold your thumbs, then please do all just palms together. Just stretching out now the front of the right hip. Bring your head upright to release the hands back down to either side of your left foot. And then slide your left foot back. And tucking the toes or the toes flat. Bottom stays in the air and we'll do a quarter dog. So right arm across the knee. Left arm stretches out, bottom up. Find your soft spot, so that might mean coming forward slightly so that your bottom's higher, or just experiment to get the maximum stretch for you that feels good. You're stretching the upper back, stretching out the, the left lung on the side, 
stretch it under the arms of the uh, lymphatic system. And then sliding the left arm back, bringing the left arm across you, and then we're going to be stretching the right arm bottom up high. And again, you can almost rest your hand on the outstretched right arm, your quarter dog. Feel that you can adjust this to make it personal and working for you. And then sliding the right arm back. Slide both arms, hands back to kneel, up, raising the arms, clasp and reverse the palms, looking forward or up, it doesn't matter, stretch to the left, away from your right waist. Again, feel that you're lifting up, out of your, away from your pubic bone. Breathing in, stretch the hands up centrally, either looking forward or up, and then come over to the other side. So to the right, stretching away from the left waist. Breathing in, stretching up. Open the arms to the side, stretching out the heart. And then bring yourself forward. And this time, put, make fists with your um, hands. Rest your forehead on top of your fists. And if you want to open your knees a little bit, then please do. So resting forward, then the modified child. Feel that the breath is connecting to the kidneys, so the breath is going more towards your back. This pose is very calming for the nervous system. While you're here, you can engage the energy in fraction as you breathe in. And just release it. And you bring it out. And then very gently press your hands, press your yeah, the fists down to the ground, so lift yourself up, hands to either side, and then we're going to drop onto our bottoms and come to sit with our legs out in front. So hips, spine, any anybody wants anybody else wants to put in any other requests? <laughs> no, 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 don't worry, no. <laughs> right. Could add loads of things. <laughs> you can, I mean, you know, no, there no, is no, something for no. every yogi pose. So hips, hands, hands in the spine, and then Carol's got hands. So very familiar, just slightly back to your legs, getting the circulation in, and then point and flex your toes a couple of times. And then circle the ankles. In one direction, circle them in the opposite direction, and then have your feet up and then just swish them from side to side. It's a subtly different way of working the muscles, it just feels subtly different. And Come to the centre, stretch your toes out. I hesitate to say scrunch them in because on a cold day like that, you might get cramps. Just release and relax them. If you want to scrunch them in, that's fine. And then just stretch them out again. And then just release. And then just big bang with a big toe joint together. That's your vibration. Sending a vibration along the whole body. You can feel it actually, I can feel it in my head even, so it just resonates through the body. And then just rubbing or tapping your legs, however you want to do that. If you want to extend it to other parts of your body, then you can do that too. 
getting the circulation boosted. And instead of swaying the lip and the knee, just massage the whole of the knee joint underneath the top. The whole knee joint is a marmor point in Ayurveda, marmor therapy. So you've got lots of little acupressure points there. Anywhere where there's a dent is an acupressure point. And you've got a couple on the outside, you know the acupressure points are really on them. I'm used to so just just the massage myself. Yeah. Mm -hmm. just just generally, as you say, anywhere that's dented in is is a acupressure point. Mm -hmm. Yes, and he's always got quite a lot around you. I think how fat your knees are. <laughs> 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 Oh dear. At least you've got a good tooth. What happened though? Oh, <laughs> God. Oh, just. It's a massive teeth. You can't see it. It doesn't hurt. No, it's, it's just, it's just um, a part of you that's yeah. failed you yeah. in some way. We can get over it. Yes, <laughs> I'll have to, won't I? I'll go into some kind of decline, which is. Um, yeah, anyway. And then just sitting up. Um, um, just um, stretch your legs out a little bit, extend the heels and just feel the inner muscles. The inner thigh, what muscles are these just in here? Um, adductor, adductive femoris, I think it's called. Okay. Yeah, well, the ones just adductors. inside from your knee running up the yes. inside. Yeah, mine's really adductive. I think mine are particularly short. <laughs> Feels like they are anyway. So that is connected into the emotion of fear. I don't know why, and it's um, very um, prevalent that in in women, it's connected to childbirth. I don't know why that should mm -hmm. be so. Why that should be so? I don't understand that. But often mm -hmm. the mushrooms you've got. Get your legs apart. Hard, baby. <laughs> um, anyway, so this is a very nice way to open it. And just slide your hands down, feel that you're lengthening from your chest, tummy in and slide down. Then, of course, once you've stopped where you're happy, just relax forward. For anyone with long hands, you can take hold of your um, big toe and second and third finger, the thumb on the top. But that, and I do stress this is entirely down to arm length, nothing to do with flexibility. And just enjoy the forward bend, calm into the nervous system. And then very, very gently slide up. So I know this seems ridiculous, Sue, but if you've got very tight muscles all around here, that will all add into your hip problems. Because mm -hmm. everything's. Yeah, oh, I know. Yeah. So it's just a way of, of, of getting um, into that. And then just soften your knees. Unusually, feel you're hugging your knees. I like to clasp my hands. Feel that your back's upright, which will bring your tummy in, your abdominal muscles. If you want to stay here, that's fine. If you want to just lift your feet off the ground, you'll have to engage your tummy even more to keep your back upright. I'm not going to suggest full boat. If you're very strong in your core, you can full boat, which I did in second. I really struggled with that, my lower back. And then, well done, very good view. It's got to be the right. Mm -hmm. You've got to, and then just when you're ready, just come forward over your knees. And then if there's any, because we're going to come to Balakanasana, so if there's any points on the soles of the feet that you would like, or anybody wants to ask Sue about yeah, anything. Suggest somewhere that you want to know about. So soles of the feet together. Knees. Huh? Knees. Well, I, I, years ago I fell down while running and I basically, I think I really cracked both my kneecaps. Ouch. And so when I kneel, some, some of those kneeling exercises, especially the left knee, is like really kind of painful. Right. Um, right, so, so, that, so all the reflex points for all your joints are down mm -hmm. the outside of your foot. So if you imagine your little toe is upper, 
Mm. And then you come to here, which the, the first bit, which is your shoulder. And then the next one down is your hip. And then coming down to your knees, sort of, well, mine's sort of in line with my ankle bone. It, it varies on the, depending on the shape. And so that's the reflex point for you. So if you, can, if you can't do it both at the same time, but if you press that one, and then on the other side, you'll probably find it's more tender on the side that you've, you've got the problem that you do a bit contortionist to do it at the same time. But you might find that's a bit more tender on that side. So it come to double double V or your, your knee. Yes, it's, actually it's easy to like that, but you can't get the underside here. So you really need to do it one at a time. Yes, yeah, so all your joints are down. So your spine is down through your big toe right round where the arch of your foot goes and down there and then the other side of your foot is, is your, your mm -hmm. joints. Okay. Okay. So the spine is joints. So the spine is on the inside right. and your joints are on the So if you just think oh your joints are on the outside of your body yes. so okay. it's outside. Oh, That's the best way to remember things. Think where they mm -hmm. are on the feet and think of the, the, mm -hmm. the shape of the body. Mm -hmm. roughly where, where stuff is, yeah. So if you've got, say, shoulder problems or whatever, you feel it on the upper part, going down to your hips. I mean, my, my mind does feel really tender on that side, and not very mm -hmm. I've got the hip problem. So you're halfway down. We'll so come to hips as well, we'll do another. But um, if you want to swap over to balance your hips up, you don't have to. If you suddenly found your sweet spot on the other side, or you know, that stay with your, 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 your sweet spot, you can actually then turn the knees around. This is one of the five perfect um, poses for hip health. And you would sit and not sit on your sofa. Which I'm sure none of us do, but anyway. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, anyway, yes. Just because on this side, this point from the reflex point for the hip, which says halfway down, just doesn't hurt at all on this side, but on this yeah. side it feels quite yeah, it's weird. And then um, just kind of enjoy massaging your feet and whatever. So this is one of the perfect five exercises. The other one is, another one is that, is your hip health. And you can, um, there are, they call them expressions. So the yogic expression is the hardest holding here and opening your elbows and going into your, your inner thighs and bouncing your knees up and down. But if you can't do that, then you can have your feet further away from you and you can sit up more and hold your feet and open your feet like a book and massage with your thumbs. That's the second one expression. And then the third expression is to hold your ankles or anywhere in your shins so that you're really sitting upright to do that. So there are many ways to do this exercise. Very good for hip health, it's very good hormonally, very good for menopause um, and congestion of the pelvic region, getting blood into that area. Um, so all of those things. And just out of interest, the, uh, one of some of the other hip things, if I can remember them, is holding um, a leg like So you're, hold, you're, you're almost like holding up like that. But I prefer to have my leg out. To have my leg out like that, rather than bringing it back. So like that on either side. And another thing that I have to have support because I can't sit between my knees unless I have support is to sit up. This particularly seems someone like me has got internal rotation on my hips. So I. But I have to sit up, I can't sit down on the ground to do that. Mm. Uh, I have to be up on, the, on, a, on a quite high block, and I can sit like this as a, as a meditation for ages, absolutely ages. But um, you would need lots of block, but that is one of the other ones. Because your, your spine is straight, it's like riding. 
from the view of the road. Yes. Probably why I've gone away with that. <laughs> <laughs> and that and rowing as well. We pay for all these yeah. things later on, don't they? See how humans do it all the time. Unless horses a few times and then also <laughs> rowing as well. Yeah. Yeah. I've fallen off the horses a few times. They always, it's a couple of spectacular ones, they made me get back straight away. Yeah. Absolutely straight away. I got somersaulted over. I just oh, somersaulted and landed, mm-hmm. literally crouched, looking up at the horse, and looked mm-hmm. at me. And they said, just get, you must get back on the horse straight away. Anyway, I was never that good, but I enjoyed it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. oh. And Libby's allergic to horses. Oh, she's horses with her eczema. And, oh. Yeah, she can't fluffs up like a puff oh, <laughs> And then Jamie was fine, but with big sister not riding. I, mean, I think we did a few rides. And that was it, really. So then just coming. So back and hips then. So come to line. Knee bent. If you can get there. Mm. <laughs> if you can get there, that's what they can get. Uh, I'll tell you what, it's really frightening to see Phil's mother oh, tumble down and you can't get her up. Three grown men are yeah, struggling yeah, to get her up. Mm. Yeah, it's that's good. all the worrying thing, isn't it? I know, so yeah, just don't ever get to that position. Yeah, yeah. Um, but she didn't ever think she'd get to that position. So, hands on the abdomen, just connecting to the breath, breathing in and breathing out through the mouth a couple of times, boosting your is it nitric oxide. very gently. We're going to start by keeping the right foot where it is and putting the left knee into the chest. You choose whether you want to, we're going to circle the knee, but you can choose whether you hold the knee tight into you with both hands and make a circle, so that's a smaller circle generally, or whether you let your left knee drop out to the left, holding it with the left hand and the right hand goes perhaps on your right hip then and make your circle with your left knee out to the side bigger. So it really doesn't matter, there's generally a bigger circle. That rolling sound outside is the yoga sign, just blowing and hitting the studio. So circling your knee, choosing which way you want to go in one direction. And then circling the knee in the opposite direction. So you're moving the leg, femur, the knee, and the hip socket. And then very gently hugging the left knee into the chest. Still holding the knee. Let it drift away to arm's length as you breathe in, and then breathing out, hugging the knee into the chest. And just carry on doing that a few times in your own breath. And then just enjoy hugging the left knee into the chest. And then supporting the left leg, left knee, as you bring the left foot to the floor. Bringing in, just loosely hold your forearms and raise your arms above your head, stretching out onto the arms. If that is too much for you, or your knees, your elbows bent anyway, just then have your feet slightly wider than hip width apart and just sway the knees from side to side. Lifting the hips as you're swaying your, um, 
the wider you've got your feet, the more your knee will drop to the center of the mat and you're massaging across your lower, your top of your bottom. Sort of sacrum area. You're stretching out under the arms. And then coming to the center, lower the arms, make any adjustments at any point to the feet if you need to do that, and then hugging the right knee into the chest. Your apana, apanasana movement on the right side, so working on the foundation of apana energy. And the same thing, either holding the knee, right knee in, and making circles, or letting the right knee drop out to the right and holding your right knee. And making slightly bigger circles, so it's your choice. Just let the leg be heavy, giving the weight of the leg to your hand. Your left hand can be on your left hip bone. So here, the aim is not to lift your, hip, your left hip bone off the floor. Your left hand is securing your hip bone to the ground. Making sure you don't have to stretch. And given that the right side is often more tricky for most people, right-handed right people, um, we tend to spend factually longer on the right side than we do on the, on the, on the bad side than we do on the good side, if so that makes sense. And then just reverse your circle. Your hip is getting, um, your leg is doing a full rotation in the hip socket. It's something we don't often do. It's very safe. And then just very gently hug the right knee into the chest, just enjoying that palm movement side. And then just very gently supporting the right um, leg to place the right foot on the floor. So both knees are up to the ceiling, both um, your feet are about hip width apart. And your feet are fractionally fraction closer to your bottom, palms down this time. And just very gently do a few pelvic tilts, so flat in the back as if you're going to lift your bottom, and then rolling so that your tailbone goes towards the floor, there's a little gap under your lower back. And just repeating that in your own breath pattern, giving flexibility all around the lower back. It's quite nice as you around that area too. You can stay doing the pelvic tilt, or if you want to very gently think about strengthening your back and it's no effort for you, you can actually lift your tailbone off the floor into a half bridge posture, so palms down even holding the mat. To lift the bottom up, chin comes naturally into the chest. You only lift as little as much as works for you. And then breathing out, lower the back, vertebra by vertebra, back down to the ground, and just carry on with your pelvic tilts. And then hugging both knees into the chest. And this time just rocking from side to side where your hips will come off the ground. And you're also walking across the back of the skull, depending on how much you want to rock. You can rock to almost your elbow, your backs of your upper arms go onto the ground. Or keep it more. 
Sim, de Deus. Very gently coming to still the super center. Just drop your hands underneath your thighs, maybe clasping them. Just raise your feet loosely to the ceiling. Just sway gently from side to side. Then you're very gently going across the back of the skull. And bending the knees and hugging the knees into the chest. And just placing the feet onto the floor, palms on your abdomen, elbows out slightly. And just carry on that swaying, lifting the hips off the ground here, with your knees gently from side to side. And if you want to linger in that side to side movement and come more onto one side and a twist, you're very welcome to do so. Stay there for a couple. The head can stay looking up, bring to one side, and then swaying the knees back and to the other side. And just in your own time, exploring side to side movement. And then just stretching the legs out along the mat. Just tense the feet and release them. Tense your knees and release your bottom. Wrists and hands show up to your shoulders and then just release away from the shoulders. Just very gently lift your chest away from the ground and just really set your back down onto the ground. And just now, just gently again, once more, roll your head, moving it from side to side. Just noticing anywhere that might be tight, releasing that. And then once more, bend your knees into your chest. Once more, rock gently from side to side. And taking your time to roll to the side. And in your own time, come up to a gentle seated position, whether that's cross-legged, if that's not good for you, then sit with your legs out. And hands on the knees. Just again, just let you walk from side to side. Just notice how far you have to tip before you engage your tummy to come and bring you back in the opposite direction. And then just sitting up. And breathing out, chin to chest, sitting up, and chin to chest, and then just relax your left hand in your right hand, relaxing. I'm going to read you a poem, I think I selected one about the wind, which I thought was very appropriate mm -hmm. today, but the poem's called Grasses, this is Carol's book that she gave me. When the wind blows, grasses will flow like dancing creatures, high and low. When the wind blows, our height senses are heightened, listening, tuning into a distant crow. 
When the wind blows, we are alert, alive, aware, but our mind and body are merely here to grow. When the wind blows, we feel at one with the earth, connected to the outside air, nature, and our inner soul. 